Hi and welcome to Hashtag Podblog. Today we talk about the super exciting, massively hyped Nike Next% percent and 4%. Percent. So, right, first things first, uh, let's talk about the, the shoe. You know, let's talk about its construction. So, what is it? What's it made of? A lot of materials. I think the interesting thing for us, everyone wants to know is it the plate? Is it the foam X? I think we've had a mess around these over the last last few days and it's quite interesting. I think we'll start with the upper first of all. Yeah. Uh, what was your take on the upper, Tom? Um, I think it's extremely uh, thin actually. A little bit of uh, rear foot structure, uh, but it's almost like a mesh-like material that's very, very soft and very, very flexible. I think f from looking at a mess around the clinic, the one thing that uh, I quite like about the upper first of all is it's very light and I'm guessing in rain and in wet surfaces it's going to be okay. The big thing that I do like is I like the gripper in the heel aspect because I felt like that was holding the foot a lot better yeah. especially with the rigidity through that bottom aspect of the shoe. I think that helped by keeping your foot in the shoe but overall I think it was very flexible and the tongue I found the tongue very unusual, to be honest. It was hard to get it to sit. It took a little bit of time to get that set to feel comfortable when you were wearing it. Okay. Um, I think it's an 8mm drop. 8mm, yes. You've got a layer of uh, Zoom X foam um, on the top. Then you've got a carbon plate, and then you've got another layer of Zoom X foam underneath. So you've got that sandwich-like effect, um, which gives it its unique sort of very, very stiff material and it's stiff all the way through and it's got this very very strange sort of point out the back which I think is supposed to sort of encourage a progression through the foot. Um, the concept, what does it say it's supposed to do? Uh, well, it's supposed to improve your performance, your speed by over 4%. Big claims. I think the big thing that I've taken from the shoe itself is that first rate rock, rocker. Yeah, I, th I think that's where they, they suggest that they get a lot of their, their sort of improvement from. They, they stiffen through the, the heel midfoot and through that forefoot region, which allows you to rock through, um, which I think, or at least we're, we're, what we're, we're told, is where you get that reduction in, um, uh, or increase, I'd say, in energy efficiency. That's where you get that propulsive advantage. Um, and yeah, I think certainly from our point of view, that's what the that's what the claims are at least. That's what Nike are, t are telling us. Um, so let's look into what the evidence actually tells us. So I mean, look, we've there is a paper published, um, which you can find in the link below. Uh, this is a comparison of the energetic cost of running in the marathon racing shoes by um, Uta Hukuma. <laughs> At least I think that's how you pronounce his name. I think Roger Cram was the main, obviously he's quite a well-known <laughs> researcher of Boulder um, in their pretty much locomotion and biomechanical lab. Um, so what does this paper tell us? I mean, first things first, what was, what was the actual testing phase? Yeah, so I think the first things first we need to dive into is they were looking at three different shoes. They had the prototype, obviously at the time it was the Nike 4%. The other one then was the most wear Nike Zoom Streak 6. I think that's what most Nike athletes were wearing. And then it is the, the, the shoe that was worn by most marathon runners at the time. It was the Adidas Boost 2. Um, we both have mixed views. Yeah. On the shoe, um, obviously the big thing that jumps out to me first of all in the research was the Nike prototype was the lightest by far. Um, it was actually 51 grams less than all the other shoes. That's the first thing that jumps out yeah. to me. And we all know what a light shoe feels like yeah. when you run in, it's a lot easier. And is that giving you an energy save? Um, I think from previous research, if you look at NIG's study, in the basketball a few years ago, um, they had a 2% increase in vertical jumps from lighter shoes. So I think that's one thing you need yeah. to take away from this also. I mean, look, they did a test basically on 18 high caliber athletes that ran six five minute trials um, in each of the shoes. Um, 
and what they did was they they basically through three to five minutes uh, they looked at the average en energetic cost um, and yeah they, they tested each of the shoes against each other uh, and you know I think the first thing I want to know from a, from a paper is what is the result uh, and that's certainly you know, I think what this paper tells us is that um, essentially there is a four percent average energetic saving observed um, which should translate to a 3.4 percent improvement in running velocity uh, at marathon world record pace <laughs> How are you on? Uh, yes, so we did have mess around on the treadmill and we did try and hold that and let's just say it's not a pace that <laughs> I would be able to hold for very long. No, be even less so. And if you are I going to attempt it, make sure there's nothing behind you because yeah. it's probably something you're not going to be able to hold on for long. <laughs> um, so the paper, the paper claims that, um, that there is an improvement and this should, does give you a 4% advantage. Uh, I think, you know, when it comes to papers, I always like to know about you know, well, what, what are the potential flaws in this paper. I think you touched on one earlier, which was the fact that the shoe's a lot lighter. Yeah. Um, I also like to know who funds these papers personally. Does that have an influence over the outcome of what you see? And as well as that, I think the, the 18 participants, they all could see visually and what shoes they were running, so it wasn't a blind study. Um, I think the re the nice thing that I would have liked to see is if the shoes were, they didn't have an Nike tick on them, they didn't have an Adidas logo, so we could really then yeah. see what the athlete felt and what, Absolutely. taking out all those factors. Make it a blind test. I think the one thing that I take away from the research is everyone is obsessed about this carbon fibre plate. We, we know carbon fibre plates have been around for many years in, in footwear. Um, if that is day-to-day -day shoes or sporting shoes for that rigid aspect. The big thing that I took from the research was it's actually a 3% from the actual Zoom X and only 1% gain from the carbon fiber plate. So I think with everyone going on about this carbon fiber plate, I think we need to look more greatly at the, the Zoom X for myself. There has been a few people online cutting these shoes up. Personally, I wouldn't spend 250 pounds to cut them up myself <laughs> um, but no. I, the, the fascination for me is the layers of foam that's like a sandwich effect on that carbon fiber plate yeah. um, and I think the shock for me was the carbon fiber plate isn't actually as thick as we thought it was I think it's about a three mil carbon fiber plate it does offer but awful, it is very very rigid when you sandwich rigidity. it between that zoom x material yeah um, absolutely you know I think it's it's an interesting concept and you know, I think that obviously the, the most um, well-known shoe currently, as it was uh, part of the tried and failed sub two hour marathon attempt um, by Kipchoge. Um, you know, but I think whenever you look at, at any marathon at the moment, you're looking at at least the top eight probably runners that are, are wearing either a bright pink or a bright green shoe at the moment, which are the next percent. I think we'll, we'll try and put a picture over us now. I think it was the London Marathon to 2008, top eight, top 10 were all in the same shoe. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that performance related? Do you think that's because the shoe enhances their running or is that because uh, Nike or <laughs> Nike are just very good at marketing? I think it's a blend of marketing. I think if you look at Nike shoes over the years, they're not black or white. They're normally quite loud as oh, well. Yeah. So that's very if you clever. are watching them on TV, you are made aware of the brand straight away. Um, and to be honest, you, you can't really miss that Nike tick. It is quite a large tick now. Um, <laughs> I think it's they're a, not it's hiding a anything. Extraordinary marketing. You can only buy them in pink or green, uh, which you know you can't miss at any start of, uh, of. I think every time I've looked at a half marathon, marathon, the top, the first row, they've all got these shoes on now. Um, again, clever marketing or you know, performance improving. I think from say. a marking aspect, obviously we'll discuss that. I have seen a white pair released this week, which is quite cool. But I think the interesting thing that a lot of people online are talking about is they've released prototypes and all prototypes have been slightly different. Mm. And I think if you're gonna go and buy this shoe today, don't fall into the marketing. It's not the shoe they did this sub two marathon. No, it isn't. Obviously, the Alpha Fly was the the successful one. The the one that they failed at, 
they were built for the athlete specifically. Yeah. Um, so body weight, everything was taken into consideration. Um, this was, that, <laughs> it was spec'd it was a, out. It was a to custom the made yes. shoe for the athlete because uh, we, let's not take anything away from Kipchoge himself. This man is an extremely fast runner and he can do it over a, a you know, a, well, a marathon distance. Um, you know, I think the big question for me would be, you know, could he achieve what he's achieved? so far in a different shoe, um, a different brand of shoe. Um, I personally think he probably could. If, if the, um, the same structures were in place for that, that sub two set up with the pacers and you know, the, 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 the car with the laser and you know, the aerodynamics and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, a, I think control he the environment, the environmental factors very well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing that I've taken out of that is with the slow-mo uh, videos of him running, he is a wicked runner. It is technique, his foot mechanics, everything is a lot better than most Joe Publix. And that's the one thing that we saw in clinic when I you mean, were yeah. testing it. Um, <laughs> How I, your foot react to the shoe, and then when you look at the online yeah. videos, how his foot reacted to the shoe. I mean, there's a, there's a technique. There is a technique, but also you know I'm I'm probably, in all honesty, almost twice as heavy <laughs> as as Kipchoge is, um, and I'm as a result of my weight and my poor running technique, I'm, I'm probably striking the floor a little harder in a slightly different position to uh, Kipchoge um, and I think that the, the, the certainly the structure of the shoe with the the very very soft sole and the very very flexible upper for me I'm not sure it works um, I tended to feel like I was almost collapsing you know in certain areas of this shoe um, and I'm not sure that over a long distance or repetitive high mileage if that's going to mean you know potential increased risk to injury for me um, I don't know but yeah I am not the same runner as Kipchoge I think yeah being a data freak that I am just by the assessments we did in the clinic we could see that there was a lot more movement from the upper through the midfoot with your foot mechanic compared yeah, yeah. to other shoes you have run in in the past okay so i think really interesting discussion i think the finishing thought for me certainly is i think the question that everyone wants to to really know is should this be banned by the iaaf yeah what do you reckon um personally i don't think so i think nike I would Nike have been innovative, innovative. I can't speak to <laughs> innovative, innovative. innovative <laughs> with with their shoe type. Um, I think now you've got to look at the other brands and they, they have to catch up. Yeah. I know there are other brands now looking at this. I know there was a shoe released two weeks ago in Kona by Asics who had a carbon fiber plate with a first ray rocker. Yeah. Don't take it away from them. Hawker has had this type of sole unit. Oh, it's had a rocker for, for many years, but obviously now we're looking at different material, different rigidity yeah. and it's time, it's time for the other brands to step up to the plate. Uh, and I agree with Gareth, I don't think it should be banned. I don't think this shoe should be banned at all. Uh, I just think it's, you know, it, it's leading the way in innovation. And I think it's time the other brands, you know, start up in their game to, to catch up with, with the sort of um, you know, gains that these shoes are making. With a powerhouse of Nike, to be honest with you, because they are dominating the game at the moment. Um, it's all over the news all the time, isn't it? Well, we're talking about it. And exactly. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. Um, anyway, fantastic. Lovely talking to you. Uh, we will be doing our question and answers next.